In August 6, 1777, the, one of the bloodiest wars in the American Revolution was fought in the forest of New York. The smell of blood, black powder filled the air as musket balls whizzed by the heads of American soldiers so fast they sounded like a swarm of bumblebees. Dead bodies paved the rolling hills, and there were rivers of blood that flowed through the once peaceful grassy hills. In the American Revolution, 70,000 American soldiers gave their lives to protect an idea. And it was a sacred idea of freedom. Today, the United States prides itself on being a free nation. And after the sacrifices that were made to obtain our freedoms, it's no wonder why we take the civil liberties so seriously. This war continues on today through a different avenue, though. And one group of these people that is on the front lines of this war is called a bus group. Now, a lot of you are probably going, well, what is a bus group? Well, basically, a bus group is anyone who performs or entertains a group or a group of people uh, in exchange for gratuities, genu like generally in public places. So, in essence, drummer boys or buskers are the drummer boys of today's fight for freedom. They lay down a, a beat to match, march to, oh my god. <laughs> um, okay, well, anyways, to understand how buskers preserve the idea of free expression, we have to have a better understanding of the laws that are surrounding free expression. Now, as most of you know, the First Amendment to the United States Constitution protects the right of free expression. It forbids the infringement on this right, and busking is a form of free expression. In the case of Goldstein versus the town of Nantucket, um, Nantucket had tried to regulate buskers as vendors, to which the courts found that this was invalid as, uh, and I'm quoting, public performance in Nantucket's traditional folk music was clearly within the scope of protected First Amendment expression. Time and time again, it's been argued in, in federal and state courts um, that free speech is the same thing as busking. So that might seem kind of simple, but what happens when free speech rights conflict with property rights? Well, in 1980, one of the most influential cases was heard on this subject and has been regarded to as Pruneyard Law. The case was Pruneyard versus Robbins, in which the Cal uh, California courts decreed that individuals may peaceably exercise their right to free speech in parts of private shopping centers regularly held open to the general or held open to the public. Now the Pruneyard Law does have limitations to it. For example, in the case of Albertsons versus Young, the courts ruled that for free speech protections to apply on private property, the owner must open the premises to for public use so as to make it the functional equivalent of a traditional public forum. And in Costco companies versus Gallant, Costco is not seen as a public forum because Costco is a standalone store open to, open to members only and was not a large shopping center where the general public was invited. Typically, um, characteristics of an open uh, of, an, of a public forum are seen as areas where um, the general public may freely congregate. Um, so in Pruneyard versus Robbins, the California Supreme Court decided that Pruneyard may restrict expressive activity by adopting time, place, and manner regulations, which will minimize interference with its commercial functions. Some of these uh, limitations are placed on uh, time, manner, and place. So in other words, there's certain times of the day that might be um, 
possibly dangerous for a person to be performing. Uh, a good example of this would be like Black Friday. You probably wouldn't want to have someone on your property that's going to be like doing a juggling act while you have people that are trampling themselves already to get through the doors. Um, place, obviously, uh, if you're going to have someone that's performing an act outside of your store, you don't want to have them like blocking fire exits or in the hallways of your store. And manner. Um, manner just basically means that the acts can't be obscene. And there's a lot of tests that the, the courts have come up with to test the obscenity of, of performance. And I don't have time to get into that right now. But um, it's, it's pretty safe to say that any sexual acts or um, anything that might be discriminatory to minorities would probably not be allowed. Um, so since, since a lot of these case laws and the Constitution's definition of free speech is pretty ambiguous, uh, law enforcement agencies have oftentimes resorted to simplified and oftentimes unlawful approaches to per, uh, prosecuting people that are engaged in free speech on private property. One of the ways that they do this is um, by using loitering to prosecute them or trespass laws to prosecute them. Loitering is legally defined as delaying or lingering about a place, public or private, with no lawful purpose and with the intent to commit a crime. So that establishes three elements that must be proven. Uh, one, that they were lingering about. Two, that they had no lawful purpose to be there. And three, that they had the intent to commit a crime. And unless all of three of those things are present, the crime of loitering never occurred. Um, also, when it comes to trespass law, a lot of times, uh, Law enforcement agencies will use Penal Code 602, um, which is applied when a person is found, and I'm quoting, refusing or failing to leave the lands immediately upon being requested by the owner of the land, the owner's agent, or by the person in lawful possession to leave the lands. Penal Code 602, however, is in regards to private property that is closed off for use for the general public. So this would not include grocery stores or um, shopping centers or outdoor malls. For this application, they would use Penal Code 602.1, which establishes trespass when, and I quote, any person interferes with any lawful business establishment open to the public and refuses to leave the premises after being requested to leave by the owner and owner's agent or a peace officer acting at the request of the owner or an owner's agent. So after hearing this, uh, one could presume that, yes, if you were asked to leave while you were performing on private property, that you would have to leave. The section of the law actually continues, though, and in section C of Penal Code 602.1, it says, this section shall not apply to any of the following persons, and it lists, and the third thing that it lists is any person on the premises who is engaging in activities protected by the California Constitution or the United States Constitution. Since busking has been deemed an act of self, uh, free expression that's protected by the First Amendment of the California Constitution, this section of the law would not apply to a busker and they would have the legal right to perform on private property that's open to the general public. So. Even though busking is a form of free speech, it is oftentimes uh, prosecuted. Uh, buskers have been prosecuted for panhandling, free speech, for soliciting, commercial free speech, as well as not having permits or licensing for performing, which you do not need permits or licensing to exercise your right of free speech. When laws are created to enforce um, free speech, they are often deemed unconstitutional. And personally, every case that I've ever dealt with in regards to busking has been dismissed by the DA before an arraignment was even thought about. Um, 
the only exceptions to this would be like stores that are standalone stores or stores that have their own parking lot like Costco or stores that are open to members only because they do not allow the general public to enter their doors. So Um, the, the war that started so long ago, um, even before the Americas were colonized, continues on today. The desire for freedom pulses through our bodies like an uncontrollable fire. And the idea of freedom is something that most Americans will define as a sacred right that is entitled to all um, Busking isn't just like performing or juggling or maybe a magician performing for the audience. Busking is the embodiment of a sacred right in which as American citizens we are all entitled to. It's a sacred right that many people laid their lives on the line for. And for every, um, it, and it's also a, a right that will continue to be threatened. But for every person that threatens this right, there will be one person to stand up to defend that right. And one group of people that will stand up to defend these rights are buskers. Thank you.